uh, first of all, congrats on the show. Um, I think people are really going to dig this. Thank um, you. I have, I have a friend who's been in a lot of movies, and I, this is a direct question for you. And when I'm out in public with him, people always come up to him and say, did I go to high school with you? Like, they can't figure out how they know him. You've been in a movie or two people might have seen. Yes. Um, and I'm curious, does the same thing happen to you? Absolutely, yeah. Is it's, it that line? Did I go to high school with you? Yes, it's more often that than anything else. <laughs> or it's, they're not really excited to, to see you, or you get the feeling that they're not really exciting to, excited to see you. They just want to figure out for themselves if you are someone that they should know from something or not. <laughs> right. And uh, so it usually ends up like that. Did you, did, did you live on so-and-so street in, you know, Milwaukee? No. <laughs> right. No. Do you ever just say yes, just to like end the conversation? I think I used to, yeah, when I was younger. But now I've, I've learned that honesty is the best policy. You just say, you know, I'm Henry Thomas, the guy from E.T. And I would, go, that's, oh, that, no, that's the wrong I knew answer. it. I'm Henry Thomas, the kid from Cloak and Dagger. Ah. <laughs> that is the better answer. You were, one, you were one of the five people that went to the theaters to see that movie. I, hypothetically, <laughs> hypothetically, I did. Um, or if it comes on cable, it's a guilty thing. You know. Anyway, we're, we're off on a complete tangent, but I thank you for indulging me. Thanks. Um, uh, I really... Uh, I really dug this show, and I really dug that how it just, you jump in, there's no wasted time, and uh, it's just well done. Talk a little bit about uh, uh, the fact that, that you do just jump into the show, that there is, you know, you're not spoon-feeding you like a setup, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's an important characteristic of the show that it's a family story. And luckily, like what, 99.9% .9 of us have families. Mm -hmm. And so when I say sister, brother, mother, father, you can download a whole bunch of information on that. And I think one of the genius uh, aspects of Mike Flanagan's story is that he takes these ideas we have about families and then really explodes them with this concept of horror. And so by the time you're invested in the family story and the ghosts start to come, you really feel for these people and the way that their family is being torn apart. Yeah, and... and I think because the story plays out, the, the show plays out on two timelines, and we're watching maybe the same event repeat itself, but it's shown through the perspective of a different character in the family, and you see, oh, that's the puzzle piece that I was missing mm -hmm. uh, from the story before, and it's, it's, it's a slow reveal. Um, but kind of that family drama wrapped in uh, uh, the horror genre, uh, with kind of a, a, a train of suspense all the way through it makes for compelling viewing. And I think also the thing about having it in two time periods is that when you're seeing the, the relationships between these siblings as adults, you're getting a lot of the context for how these dynamics developed. So I feel like you're able to jump in because you, ha you do get a lot of the, the backstory as it's going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, how much of the arc of the season did you know? Did you have like all ten scripts going in? How much did you know about the arc? We had, I think we had eight when we started. Mike, though, gave us all our full stories. We, he just hadn't published the last two for us, and we were given that gift. You know, Netflix is very storyteller friendly. They're very into filmmaking, and so they gave Mike and the entire writers' room the time to create this story. And so by the time we showed up, we knew basically what happened until we got to the house. Which is a great luxury because usually on a show, you're you're seeing the episode for that week, and then you're waiting for the next week's episode, and um, that would be really problematic on a show like yeah. this because the the timelines converge all the time, and and as an actor, it's your responsibility to keep track of where your character is yeah. in the story. Uh, cool. I already got to go, uh, but I did want to address the, the long takes of, of episode six, but that'll be another time. No, it, what did you think of that, by the yeah. way? Um, I, I have my, someone who works for me watched the whole thing. Okay. I've only made it to episode four. Okay. So, but ah. he told me you need to bring up episode six and yeah. then three long takes. Yeah, there are four, there are four cuts in the whole episode. Yeah. I, so we rehearsed it like a play and we shot the episode in two days.